We're going to try this again. Hello? Melissa, I am so sorry about the first time. Oh, you're okay. fine. <laughs> okay. I think we're over it. We're going to go from the beginning. This is Jim, the Keys bartender. We just went through our little promo here, and I'm talking to Melissa Devine of Concord, New Hampshire. And you work at Cheers in New in Concord, New Hampshire, right? And you were going to say, what's the saying is about Cheers? <laughs> Where everybody knows your name. <laughs> okay. I hear that a million times a shift. You do? Is it a oh, chain? Yeah. Um, no, the original Cheers is in um, Boston in Faneuil Hall, and then we have another Cheers in Concord. Same menu, but different ownership. Oh, okay. Uh, and how long have you been there? Um, I actually just went back. I was working at Buffalo Wild Wings for five years, um, and then I just recently left Buffalo Wild Wings. I kind of got sick of the corporate world mm -hmm. where every plate has two carrots and three celeries and six ounces of real life. <laughs> I just got a little fed up with that. So I just came back to Cheers maybe about six months ago, but before oh, they, I worked so they, at Buffalo Wild Wings. They practiced that policy. There was a book that came out like 20 years ago. Just give them the pickle. You ever hear of that? <laughs> yeah. No, and, I haven't, but. <laughs> okay, no, well, we just give them the pickle, meaning when someone asks for a pickle, it's not as, it's not what you think, but it's just like when someone asks for a pickle, just give them the damn pickle, you know? It's yeah, like, no, I understand that right. saying. Corporate restaurants are always so stuck to their ways, and like I said, they're two carrots, three celery. <laughs> oh, really? And it's arranged in a certain way? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Who knows? You know, someday we could get uh, something from Buffalo Wild Wings, but that isn't now. Uh, mm -hmm. And and the reason I, I contacted, and another funny thing that happened, is that I put out a call to bartenders. Uh, it was a combination. Bartenders and people from the Florida Keys, because we are the Keys bartender, but I'm also a bartender. And, and I ask you where you might uh, have gotten you know, the post from, and you mentioned a group. And I, one group, I think I'm sure that we were on is Bartenders United. Yep. And the other one was called? <laughs> just the tip. <laughs> just the tip. I like that one. I just, I it's, didn't want to be yeah, the one to say that. And uh, but I've, said, I've said much worse before, so that's nothing. I'll gladly be the person that says it. Okay, no, I'm just, the, just, the, you know, just the tip. And uh, where are you originally from? Are you from New Hampshire? I am, yep. Okay. So yep, you're I'm like from New Hampshire. I've lived in Concord, pretty like Concord and like the couple surrounding little towns. But to anyone who doesn't know, it, Concord. <laughs> I'm sure oh. you've never heard of Pennacook or Bosquin or Andover. <laughs> well, I think in itself, I read a lot of Stephen King novels. So most of uh, when there's a serial killer, he comes from New Hampshire. Yeah, right. I guess that says we're pretty crazy. No, 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 not at all. Not, not, no more. I'm, I'm originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, so um, I, I know you're probably a Patriots fan, so I apologize for that. Not too hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so how'd you get into bartending, Melissa? Um, I started w working in the restaurant industry when I was 17 or 18. I started out hosting where mm -hmm. I was at. A young teenage girl that everyone hated. I think that goes for most restaurants. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you, um, what do you mean everyone hated? And hated? then I worked my way from... Well, I just feel like there's always a lot of, like, animosity between the servers and the uh, hosts, between the seating and not getting skipped in rotation. And <laughs> so that was my introduction to the restaurant world. Oh, really? And then after that, that one... Yeah. yeah. After Once that. I turned 18, I was old enough to serve alcohol, so I started waitressing, and then that led to bartending. Okay, and, and we were talking earlier that you have been on your own since you were 18, right? You moved out of the house when you were yes. 18 or something? 
and and yes. you went to college and you took your you you went to college and you got four degrees. What what do those degrees? Have? I do. I have um, early education, human services, addiction counseling, and psychology. So I like oh, they, people. They do sound like they go hand in hand. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's this? I'm recording. Oh, my friend's asking. Uh, he thought I was playing live. Um, uh, <laughs> my friend was here. Then. So they, they do sound like, and, and at, you were working while you were going to school, and you finished those degrees in three years, right? Yep. At just the local community college. Uh-huh. And, you, you know, you went to, you, you told me that, you know, you're, you were fed this idea that, you know, you know, I have to go to college and you have to do this after high school. And uh, I do, I do take notes. If you notice. <laughs> I and, do. And, I did notice that. Yes. And you came out and you looked for jobs and you, you discovered what? Uh, after I graduated high school, um, the rule was either you work full time in my household. The rule was you go to school and work part time or you work full time and pay rent. So I went to school and um, I worked part time. And that's when I got my first waitressing job at Ruby Tuesdays in Concord as a host. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ruby Tuesdays. I, yep. That's some. Pl I mean, if you're in the United States, I think someone's uh, at, everyone's been to a Ruby Tuesday. So you were serving and uh, had, had you, uh, so you, you got out of school, you started looking for a job after you, you were, you were already bartending, right? Uh, no, that was when I first got into the restaurant. So I started out hosting and then I waitressed and then I bartended. No, but were you bartending while you were in college? Like finishing? Oh yeah. Yeah. While well, I was in college. Yeah. So you got used to the, the money you were working cheers originally and then you went to buffalo wild wings because you're 26 years old so i imagine that you must have been finishing up school when you were at cheers or you know when you made your transition the first time yeah and correct and so yeah i'm really good with math so uh, <laughs> <laughs> you take notes and you're good at math yes and <laughs> what made you what you so you're serving how do you make your transition in bartending um, a girl that I was friends with was bartending and I kind of like watched her do her thing. And I liked the aspect of kind of having your own area, your own, you're not relying on a bunch of different people. And so I kind of asked if I could bartend and they kind of mm -hmm. send me through the run around a couple of times. Yeah. And then, um, I started bartending when I, my first time bartending was at Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay. And you've never called yourself a barmaid, have you? No, I've bar backed before. Well, that's bar back. But I've so. never called it a bar. I've never called it a bar made before. And and we did, and, and for the listeners, we made it, the discussion. I believe, and as it sounded like you did, that uh, bartend is a non-gender specific, so it works for everyone. Just like doctor, pilot, um, lawyer. You know, you don't have a. a I, I don't understand why you'd put a gender on a profession that doesn't really. Uh, yeah. Require it, you know, unless you're looking for. Actually, there's only very few few uh, specific things that need to be gender specific, but in bartending is not one of them. Uh, so, you went through all these years of uh, college, and then you went out looking for a job, and you discovered that, you know, you know, I, I guess your expectations were you're going to go to college, you're going to get. A degree, and you're going to be able to earn a great living. Correct, and I was going to work a nine to five and <laughs> do that, that was whole thing. going to be thing. awesome, right? What but, were your dreams? Like you were going to work nine to five, have a weekend off, have a big house with a little picket fence around it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Throw throw a ball with the dog. You know. Yeah, yeah. A little swing in the back. <laughs> no swing okay that's all right i'm just I'm no just... we can we'll we'll trade the swing for a hammock until i decide when i'm ready for kids but until then we'll stick with a hammock <laughs> who says the swings for a kid i guess that is true we could yeah. get rowdy what and have the talking about <laughs> melissa an adult can have a great time on a swing <laughs> and and the, the money wasn't there you told me that money wasn't there for that those jobs 
you know? Yeah, I found um, once I was uh, graduating college, I had worked a couple internships and I had been offered a couple positions. But I mean, the pay, the starting pay was only like twelve, thirteen dollars an hour. And being I think I was like 20, 21, being that age, living on my own, paying my students, starting to have to pay my student loans back because I wasn't in school anymore. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't make that money unless I wanted to work like three jobs. So, so, <laughs> so well, how, I found yeah. out. Keep on going. I found out what I could what I could make waitressing and bartending. So, I kind of went that route. Well, how, what's your view on the position now? Like, what do you what do you think about bartending? I mean, right now, honestly, I feel like I use my degrees. I mean, maybe not the early education that much, but. Um, all my other degrees, people come to the bar and they're looking for someone that they can talk to and someone that is actually going to have a little bit of personality, which I've been told I have a lot of personality. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you, yeah. Oh, you you were told you have a lot of personality. Okay. Well, I mean, you, yeah. you took a lot of psychology too, you know, right? Yeah. Yes, and I did. What, what people have uh, a lot of personality, though, if you were going to use the physician's desk manual. What was that? No, um, people like psychotic people have a lot of personality too. You know, they got a lot of different ones. <laughs> well, I guess, <laughs> I guess I would qualify for that. No, I guess I, no, I'm, I'm a little crazy. I'm not saying that you do. <laughs> um, so, so that early childhood, I would, uh, you know, later on today, I'm doing my regular show with my co-host Jenna Kelly, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, baby consciousness a little. Because I was thinking about that, like when when the, you know a baby's born, with, or they have the pre-wired thought process, or are they coming out a blank slate and they're real quick learners, you know, and and things like that. But when the person gets, and you don't, I'm not saying you serve them. When a person gets really fucked up, <laughs> it's like you're talking oh, to a baby it. again, right? Yeah. You're talking to a child and you're like telling them and they're angry. <laughs> like, give me my bottle. Give me my rattle. You know, the bottle is actually yeah. a real bottle at this point, you know, but uh, uh -huh. I, I would, ha I would say that everything that you've learned is uh, you know, all your degrees are applicable to uh, bartending right now. But uh, I wanted to ask some questions that are pointed right now. Um, how hard <laughs> is it nice to be to uh, uh, your, a very attractive young lady. How hard is it for you to be nice to someone and not have them think that it's something more? Like, you know how we're all supposed uh, to be nice? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I'm well, going to tell you my I'm, experience. I'm going to tell you my experience. When I'm, I'm very polite to women and stuff like that. Now I'm 55 years old. I don't have that problem with younger women anymore because now I just seem like a really great uncle. When I'm talking to them. And, you know, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not creepy and stuff, but if I'm talking to someone within 10, 12, 13 years, I got to hedge it. And there's got to be things where you tell them like, you know, this is, we're here, you know, we're in this environment. This is where it is. You know, it all takes place on, the, you're on this bar side of the bar. I'm on the, uh, this side of the bar. And uh, it's not, we're not, it's not going to go much further than this. So, or any further, do you have any difficulties with that? Um, dealing with the creepers. <laughs> well, the creepers are going to come up. This is just like with people thinking, well, I want to ask you about any stalky guys or girls. I mean, it happens with girls too. <laughs> I'm in, in Key Largo. Uh, there's a, a heavy, uh, we have a heavy uh, uh, population of, uh, and they're not heavy women, I'm saying, but of, uh, <laughs> of alternate lifestyle. And, it, you know, they, they may think that of them. Not so many guys. I imagine Key West, that would be something. But um, it, it changes when you get older. But as a younger person, I remember, I did bartending young. I, I remember girls getting offended when you were like, saying, oh, see, have a great night. And you're like, what? It's over? <laughs> I mean, no, I, I don't strippers, get offended. Strippers have to have it much worse than them. Strippers have to have it. <laughs> I hope they do, huh? <laughs> yeah. 
Do you know what I'm saying, though? Um, so you're nice to someone. Yeah, you no, say hi I, to them. You're sweet. I, um, do, if, if you're uncomfortable with the question, we don't have to ask that. Oh, no, no, not at all. Um, I, I basically, I kind of play it how it is. I mean, if once they start to say, like, once they, once they start to be a little weird or start to, like, kind of cross that line, I usually just kind of make a joke out of it kind of check them keep them in place and then i mean if they continue i just kind of like move on to the next one and just make sure they have that full drink and there's nothing really that they can like (laughs) venture out towards okay well how okay now now to go deeper when you have that stalky guy the creeper or girl (laughs) i mean i'm I'm sure um what, what, when you say that, uh, one story really sticks out in my mind. Um, okay. One time when I was bartending, it was right about close. I was uh, I was at Buffalo Wild Wings at the time, and there was this really weird man that just came in like probably five, ten minutes before close, sat down at the bar, and like he was kind of weird. His, just his demeanor was weird. I could tell something was up, but I was like, whatever, maybe he's just a weird guy. And so I was kind of like watching his body language and stuff. And he, he remember, I remember he ordered a tall magic hat number nine. So I gave him his beer and I sat it down in front of him and he picks up the beer and stares me right in the eyes and chugs the whole beer while not like not locked, like not leaving eyesight. Oh, really? And I was like, okay, like, yeah, I'm like, okay, this guy's a little weird. So then he slams his beer down, he burps, and all of the foam starts coming out of his nose, out of his mouth, like, he was just a, he was just a mess. So I took the beer, I was like, all right, you're done. Like, pay your tab, yeah. don't pay your tab, just get out of here. <laughs> and he had ordered food. It was a traditional Tuesday, so the wings are half off. So I gave him his food, and he opens it, and he says, how am I supposed to eat these? There's bones in them. And I'm like, um, <laughs> I don't really care how you eat them. Just get out of my bar. <laughs> Long story short, he got his takeout. He got out. He didn't pay his tab. He got into the parking lot. At this point, I had gotten my manager, and um, he got into the parking lot, went to go take off in his automatic car but was stuck in neutral and his automatic so then we were like okay cops ended up coming and it was just it was just a weird scenario really? the guy was weird yeah they were pulling everything i mean it looked like he had a clown car in his pockets he had so Holy much shit. stuff in his pockets yeah he's just it does sound like a, stephen a weird king. dude it sounds like a stephen king was that pennywise the clown did you ever see it? <laughs> it might have been. It was right around oh the time that movie, you the drank, new one, came you out. Drank the beer without blinking, staring at you the whole time, and then all the foam shooting out. And then out. foamed it up all through his nose and everything. I'm like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> wow, uh, I like that. Um, I like that. I just la- just last night, I had someone ask me. This is him. I think this was his pickup line. It was definitely a first. He said. Hey girl, have you ever been roofied? <laughs> like Wow, um, that's a good one. You ever been roofied? I was Bill, like, um, Bill Cosby. N- no I creepy guess. Bill Cosby. Creepy creepy man, please get away from me. <laughs> yeah. You ever been roofied? Oh man. If you use that, let me know how it works for you. I mean it doesn't work good in New Hampshire, but <laughs> I'm married. I'm married. I can't say that stuff. Um it's like have you ever seen have you ever seen the uh a a dungeon before. <laughs> yeah, it's probably right around those lines. There you go. Have you ever have you ever been caught locked in a shed? Because we're in the key, so it's all coral. You know, it's all. You're coral. like, hey, girl, ever been in a shed for six months? Yeah, we don't have a lot of land, so a lot of that stuff doesn't happen down here. We don't have wide open spaces, and the people are kind of right on top of each other here. So if you want to be if you want to be a creeper slash kidnapper or something <laughs> like that, you got to go to the mainland where you've got more wide open spaces. Um, here well, we if got, I ever go pretty, to Florida, I'll stay away from the mainland. Florida, there's a lot of weirdos in Florida. I'm telling you, there's just <laughs> multitudes more besides the size of the population. The one, the craziest ones. Uh, there's crazy ones in the Keys, but the more the shadier ones are on the mainland because it can't blend in as well down here. 
We only get a certain <laughs> a certain type of weirdo down here, but we get a lot of them. Okay. <laughs> They're all relatively the same amount of weird, but there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's just tons of them. Um, um, but I mean, <laughs> we, we talk about it in a podcast. I mean, I had I had a guy come in, and you, people who are li regular listeners, he he, a woman came in, she had her denture stolen by this man, and he was holding them hostage for five hundred dollars, <laughs> and uh, that's a real what? thing that occurred. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, what was he yes. doing with them? Just had them in his pocket. dollars It was the boyfriend of him, and they were, you know, he thought, you know, I'll just take your dentures and you give me five hundred bucks so I can buy my drugs. You know? That sounds really romantic. If you story, see him again, let me know his number. Uh, he lives in Homestead, <laughs> so if you come down, I don't know. I I don't think it would be the appropriate <laughs> person. I'm I'm uh, like I said, I'm more of an uncle. I would never. When someone's bothering a young lady, I'm going like, you got to leave that girl alone. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I've come definitely, I've them. definitely had other guests. I've had other guests like check other people. Like once people start getting a little creepy, I've had like my regulars speak up for me. Or, I mean, I'm definitely the type of girl that holds her own, though. Like well, I, I oh, said, like once someone starts to be, I'm sure you do. Yeah, <laughs> once someone nice starts someone to be a little back, creepy, though, I so kind of have to watch it. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. Um, do you you know when you have someone come up to the bar sometimes and they say something that's unintentionally funny, and uh, <laughs> and you, and sometimes it feels as if they're brought to you just to feed you lines as a straight person <laughs> in a in a comedy routine, and they come up and ask you a question. Do you um? Oh. Do, do you just laugh at them? Do you say it to them? I mean. I, um, I, I know what I one, experienced, but just think about that question they ask you. Like you always, I get the ones, do you have a bathroom? Do you, um, what's the name of your fish sandwich and all this? And I have, I got lines. I have several lines I say, and it's just like when they came, you know, and you know, for the bathroom one for me, and I'll just tell you that to give you, inspire you. Uh, I go like this. I knew there was a problem with the design of this building. Until and you until you enunciated that request, I didn't realize that we neglected to build <laughs> restrooms. That's yeah, that's kind of the the program. route I take after those questions. <laughs> what? No, I think. Uh, that's that's the way I go when someone asks those kinds of questions too. I had a yeah. uh, I had a guest ask me the other day or a couple months ago, um, "Is there meat in your garlic chicken nachos?" I said, wow. I don't know. Let me ask the cook. So I marched my butt right back to the kitchen. I said, hey, guys, do we have meat in our garlic chicken nachos? And they all looked at me like I had eight heads. <laughs> no, I, and and I I would, as soon to, as they say it, I can assure you it's a vegetarian chicken. <laughs> I marched right back to the table and I was like, I just checked with the kitchen. Um, we do have we do have um, meat. We have chicken in our garlic chicken nachos, but we do have a vegetarian <laughs> option. <laughs> <laughs> I just go along with it. And hopefully they catch it. If they don't, maybe it's not their time. <laughs> I like pretzels, but I don't like salt. That's what I get sometimes, you know. Yeah. Uh, Can you wipe all the salt off my pretzels? I'm like, sure. Yeah. I'd love to. <laughs> How about when it comes to uh, order drink orders? Let me go. Um, uh, Can you make me a vodka martini, and it's but not too strong? Yeah, um, my martini is a little strong. Yes. Or my favorite, um, one of the girls I worked with the other day sent back a lemon drop martini because um, she wanted to add more alcohol in it. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all. I'm all confused alcohol. on what you want, what more you want me to put in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, are your mar? Do you make a good margarita? I mean, I like to. I like to make. I like margaritas without um, the sour mix. I'll use fresh squeezed lime juice. I I do that too. But I mean, when someone asks that, when I, someone asks me, do I make a good one? It's like asking, do you make a good <laughs> pizza? Do you? You know, everyone likes a different pizza. I like. Yeah. If you ask me, well, that's usually where I'm like, like how do you, do you like a good your vodka margarita? Tonic? How do you want your vodka tonic? Do you want like a splash? Yeah. Of tonic? <laughs> Do you want to splash a tonic or do you like orange juice in with it that I don't know? Is there something about it that makes, well, this person makes it this way? And I said, well, just, you know, you know what? Or you can just, instead of me guessing what you're going to like, 
Why don't you tell me? <laughs> like, are you a, are you, I mean, like, are we going to get along? Well, I don't know. What are you like? Are you a killer? <laughs> I don't get are you going to be killers. weird all night? Or, yeah. or do we have are to Are you going to drink a beer and stare at me while you're staring with the eyes wide open and foam coming out of your mouth? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I they like do, when they, um, I, I did have, have an older man named Jerry come up to me. Uh, this guy came up. He was 90 years old. He goes, and he goes like, he looked at me. And I don't know. Uh, I'm 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 55. I'm over all that macho stuff. But I'm a fitness instructor, and I'm about six four, 245 pounds. And he came up to me, and he goes, "Are we going to have a hard time?" He said that. Like, uh, there was a choice. <laughs> like, I was going to go. Now, I'm very healthy. And I go to the man, and I go, unless you do something very strange, I don't think there should be anything unusual that goes on. But I, I don't know if he thought we were a perfect match because this guy was 93 years old. Now, we drastically, our, our fitness levels really drop off. Mine, mine is dropping off every year. So I imagine by the time 93, I'm not going to be approaching anybody 40 years younger than me and telling you, hey, uh, do I need to come and kick your ass? Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was interesting. And that was a question I got from the guy. And I go, yeah, I don't know if we're going to have a problem. Are you going to go to a, a, an empath? I, I don't make a fun of dementia, but are you going to confuse me with uh, Joseph Stalin? You know, you <laughs> think I'm Joseph Stalin. And they start freaking out. You know, I don't know. So I think, freaking out. Yeah. I, I and I'm not trying to what I try to do is to draw things out of people, you know, like you as a bartender. <laughs> You're at your place of work, right? It's slow yeah. night. It's a very slow night. You're with people you like. You're people at cheers. Let's say you're people at cheers. You're are you tight with them? Or do you go into work and just yeah, work and leave? I let, yeah. No, uh, I, I think we're very close. Cheers has a smaller. You do. Um, usually I try to swindle the cooks for food. Um, <laughs> take a couple laps. Uh, swindle the cooks. Yeah, I don't know. Right. I make them feel uncomfortable, or I make them blush, and then they toss me a mozzarella stick or some fries. <laughs> do you fe feign low blood blood sugar or something like that? Like do a Scarlett O'Hara? Uh, no, I'm like... just the hungriest girl you'll ever meet. Yeah. <laughs> no, they all make fun of me because I'm always, I'm literally always eating. I'm, yeah. I always have snacks hidden around the restaurant. I'm like five one on a good day and like 110 uh -huh. pounds. But I'm telling you right now, my apron is stuffed with snacks. I got gummies hidden in the 20s. I've got <laughs> pretzels that, hidden over in the 40s. What kind of state is New Hampshire? <laughs> what do you what, what is that what do you mean by that oh um no i well it depends the kind of day i'm having i definitely have a batch of special gummies on deck at all times let's be honest someday, we work in the industry we're gonna have that down <laughs> here uh you are truly in a promised land a little cold up there but uh uh oh, that's fabulous we yeah, I want to give you a idea and you may not like it but what i do is i wrote up a bunch of cards for people. And if it's a slow night, I say every time they come up and order, they pull a card, right? And they have to order a drink in the style of, right? I put in a Jamaican, okay. a professional wrestler. I put a, uh, a pantomime artist, you know, one of these guys like Marcel Marceau, the guys that have the white face and they kind of act out the things. Or a British aristocrat. That's I awesome. Have to guess. I know. And I put it in every time I go, an astronaut, do an astronaut, you know, order a drink like an astronaut would. Or, you know, a World War II pilot, you know, and it, or a geisha girl, a very, you know, honorable, honorable Jim, who you may, you please make me a gin and tonic, you know, something like that. That passes the time <laughs> of day. Or guessing the next person that comes in. And the next person comes in, you have to say the right thing to them. You have to, you have to. That's have pretty to cool. Yeah. The, the next one I do, people say, is this the right, someone came in and, and they said, am I coming in the right entrance? I said, what level did you want to be on? And they go, really? <laughs> a level? I said, yes. Now, you haven't been to the Keys. Very few buildings have two floors. No, I haven't. 
Very two floors. Oh, really? Two, yeah. None have basements because it's rock, like three, wow. four inches down. No, none have. Huh. So I say to them like that. And uh, so there's all there's all good things to do. I mean, the best thing that ever happened to me, and I'll say this, I repeated this twice before. We were, every season we uh, shut down for a month and cleaned out at this one place I worked. And we had the whole restaurant torn apart. We had chairs on top of tables. We were filthy. We were cleaning the ceiling. We had the bottles pulled up and all this stuff. And I'm walking through and everyone's in regular clothes. They look like hobos and or homeless people in there. And this a foreign couple walks in and they go, um, are you serving lunch? And I go, table for two? And they just looked at me and I just point over to like a, we had like a mess of tables over there. Is that all right for you? And they just looked at us and they stood there for a couple <laughs> minutes. And I said, I'm sorry, we're cleaning up. It took them a while to process that. I thought it was maybe they came out of the desert and they were sun blinded or something like that. But this is what you get, I guess. And, yeah. But you yeah. are a funny girl, Melissa. You know that? I got kind of going, going back to the, what was that? What? Did what? What did you say? I, I said, you are a funny girl, I said. Oh, you... thank you. I've been told. <laughs> So um, going back to the funny question things, sometimes when people ask where the bathroom is, I like to point them in the wrong direction, uh -huh. point them to the kitchen. So then they walk into the kitchen and get real confused. <laughs> well, that's a good one. I mean, imagine if you get someone that's too drunk, and, you're going to be peeing in your dish. And then you but... smile. and <laughs> we, we, uh, That's why you'd probably have to like find a stool and climb up there. So if they have that much ambition, I think I might let them. I I had a guy come <laughs> in, um, and he sat down on the stool and he fell off the stool. He sat down and fell. As soon as he oh, yeah. And I said to him, I go, oh man, I'm not gonna have to. I, I said I'm not gonna be able to serve you. And he goes, not again. And I go, what? Yeah, the last two places wouldn't serve me. I said, you made it to two different, and this guy was walking. I said, you made it to two different places? Still trying to be getting, boy, this guy was ambitious. But uh, how do you cut <laughs> someone off? How do you cut someone off when you have someone? Um, I've done it a couple different ways. Um, sometimes, like if someone, well, I mean, if someone gets really, like, aggressive, if they're really drunk and get really aggressive with me, I'll usually, um, I usually work with another person. I don't know how um, your bar works, but there's usually about two people, there's usually two people that work. And so I'll usually grab the other bartender, like I'll tell them no, I'll tell them they're shut off and then they'll try to get something from the other one. And I'll just have them repeat exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes if they order, if they try to order another drink, I'll just put a water in front of them. That's, <laughs> that's, you know, that's very, that's a smart, it's very straightforward. It. Yeah. I'm usually by my, I'm usually by myself. And I go and say, listen, I'm concerned about your well-being, and I do that. And I enlist the people. I make sure the people around me know that. I care. But if it's a group of people and they're all like that, they just kind of get up and leave. I got people coming in sometimes because we're the keys. And they think, you know, we're, we're in the keys. You can get like they were in New Orleans or Las Vegas. Yeah, that that's the right of theirs to be intoxicated as soon as they come in. And <laughs> What are you going to do, right? Yeah. Just going to smile and put that water in front of them. Okay. Or well, sometimes if I'm feeling real witty, I'll, uh, they'll order a drink from me and then I'll list off a bunch of irrational things I can't have. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, but let's talk about something we can have. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, like I said, I always turn things kind of back into like, I just kind of turn it into a joke and then hopefully they just catch on that. I'm just being a smart ass. And the answer is no, no matter how many times you ask me. <laughs> No, they, 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 you know, yeah, there's sometimes you can't turn off the anger with these people. Um, no. Yeah. Hey, Melissa, I think this has been great. Uh, we've had 35 minutes and it uh, went by. Oh. Like nothing. Uh, I want to yeah, thank you awesome. for being on the podcast and I'd like to have you on again. Um, uh, you know, that you were excited about it. I was, I was excited about I it. I was once. so excited. Yeah. 
I've right. never I've never done anything like this before, so I was really excited. <laughs> oh, great, great. Do you want to um, – listen, I'll post a picture if you uh, send it to uh, Jim and Key's bartender. You know, something you want okay. posted. Some, I'll make it a title and <laughs> size and all that, you know? So I won't lift it from your Facebook page or anything like that, you know? That's creepy. Okay. You know? You know? <laughs> Unless you point uh, one I, uh... to one on Facebook that you want, and I could do if you don't, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to send right. a shout out to anybody? Um, I'll send shout out to all my fellow bartenders in Concord. Um, my cat Nugs. She's the real OG. She's been with me. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> What's the name? Nubs. <laughs> Nugs. N U G Z. The Z is because she's cool. Nugs. Okay, that is cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad your cat listens to podcasting. That's the next uh, demographic we want to break into. Yeah, she nice. listens to podcasts, and her name is Nugs because guess what she eats? Nugs. N- Nugs? I got it. <laughs> I think I got it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Melissa. I'm going to be signing off. Uh, this is Jim the Keys bartender. Thank you, Melissa De- Devine from Cheers in yes. Concord, New Hampshire. Thank you, Melissa. All right. Thank you, Jim. Take care. Bye. Bye.